hello hello welcome welcome to day 334 of our bible in a year challenge my name is sandra i'm gonna be your host for today welcome we are committed to reading our bibles in a year with just less than 20 minutes daily read time yes you heard me right just less than 20 minutes daily read time please kindly go ahead right now subscribe to my youtube channel Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleba. Let's get started. Day 334, November 30th, 2022. 365 days, Bible reading, Old Testament, Daniel 5, 17 to 31, Daniel 6, 1 to 28. New Testament, 1 John 1. 1 John 2, 1 to 11. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 136, verse 1 to 12. Old Testament and IV version, Daniel 5, verse 17 to 31. Then Daniel answered the king, You may keep your gifts for yourself and give your rewards to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writing for the king and tell him what it means. Your Majesty, the Most High God gave your father Nebuchadnezzar sovereignty and greatness and glory and splendor. Because of the high position he gave him, all the nations and peoples of every language dreaded and feared him. Those the king wanted to put to death, he put to death. Those he wanted to spare, he spared. Those he wanted to promote, he promoted. And those he wanted to humble, he humbled. But when his heart became arrogant and hardened with pride, he was deposed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. He was driven away from people and given the mind of an animal. He lived with the wild donkeys and ate grass like the ox, and his body was drenched with the dew of heaven until he acknowledged that the Most High God is sovereign Lord over all kingdoms on earth and sets over them anyone he wishes but you belshazzar his son have not humbled yourself though you knew all these instead you have set yourself up against the lord of heaven you had the goblet from his temple brought to you and you and your nobles your wives and your concubines drank wine from them you praised the gods of silver and gold of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which cannot see or hear or understand. But you did not honor the God who holds in his hand your life and all your ways. Therefore, he sent the hand that wrote the inscription. This is the inscription that was written, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Parsin. Here is what these words means. Mene, God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then at Belshazzar's command, Daniel was clothed in purple, a gold chain was placed around his neck, and he was proclaimed the third highest ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Babylonians, was slain, and Darius the Medim took over the kingdom at the age of 62. Daniel 6, verse 1 to 28. Daniel in the den of lions. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom with their administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now, Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this point, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Finally, this man said, we will never find any basis for charges against this man Daniel unless it has something to do with the law of his God. 
So these administrators and satraps went as a group to the king and said, making Darius live forever. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being during the next 30 days, except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, your majesty, issue the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be re repelled. So, King Darius put the decree in writing. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Then, these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So, they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. Did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any God or human being except to you, your majesty, would be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, the decree stands in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. Then they said to the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you. Your majesty, or to the decree you put in writing, he still prays three times a day. When the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. Then the men went as a group to King Darius and said to him, Remember your majesty, that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, no decree or edict that the king issues can be changed. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve, continually rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles, so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him, and he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve, continually been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, may the king live forever. Hallelujah. My God sent his angel and shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. Glory to God. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Then King Darius wrote to all the nations and peoples of every language in all the earth, May you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Hallelujah. New Testament, NIV version. 1 John 1 verse 1 to 10. The incarnation of the word of life. 
that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at, and our hands have touched, these we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ we write this to make our joy complete light and darkness sin and forgiveness this is a message we have heard from him and declare to you god is light in him there is no darkness at all if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness we lie and do not leave out the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of jesus his son purifies us from all sin if we claim to be without sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. 1 John 2 verse 1 to 11. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for ours but also for the sins of the whole world. Love and hatred for fellow believers. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him but does not do what he says, he commands is a liar and the truth is not in that person but if anyone obeys his word love for god is truly made complete in him this is how we know we are in him whoever claims to live in him must live as jesus did dear friends i am not writing you a new command but an old one which you have had since the beginning this old command is the message you have heard. Yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and in you because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 136 verse 1 to 12. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders his love endures forever who by his understanding made the heavens his love endures forever who spread out the earth upon the waters his love endures forever who made the great lights his love endures forever the sun to govern the day his love endures forever the moon and stars to govern the night his love endures forever to him who struck down the firstborn of egypt his love endures forever and brought Israel out from among them, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, if you're here and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Congratulations. If you said this prayer, we are so excited to welcome you into God's family. Kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you give your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleba. Thank you for being here today. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.